Luxury without limitations. Style without compromise. A life well lived. Welcome to Selling the Lux Life, the only radio show that seeks out and highlights the deeply authentic and genuinely meaningful, unique luxury lifestyle experiences in Orange County. Bringing new and emerging premier products and services to discerning clients and connecting the affluent customer to the finer things in life. Hello everybody and welcome to this episode of Selling the Lux Life brought to you by Bespoke Men's Clothiers. You can check them out at bespokestyle.com. And today we are at the Center Club in Costa Mesa with my good friend and general manager at this wonderful esteemed facility, Mr. Shaheen Visu. Shaheen, glad to sit down with you. We've been trying to do this for a bit. <laughs> we have. Um, so um, tell me about Center Club. Let's start with that. I, I, there's so much for us to cover, but I want to start with this because this is an amazing location. I don't know how many people are aware of where it is, what it has to offer, so give us a little background on the Center Club. Well, our vision here at Center Club is to be the preferred gathering place for our members and their guests, and uh, that's exactly what we fulfill. Um, we, we like our members to think of us as the first place to go to, as opposed to other options, and, um, and, and come to the club to, uh, to work, play, celebrate, host, uh, and that's exactly how members tend to use the club in all of those various ways. And, and the club has an interesting history, right? Because because it, I think it's sort of tucked away a little bit, yep. maybe on purpose, <laughs> right? And and it also has an association with things that are around it. That's right. So sure. let's give people a little background because I didn't know this until I realized there was such a place. I thought it was just valet parking. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, uh, the the club was really a, uh, a vision uh, of two great two great men. Uh, Henry Sergerstrom and uh, uh, Robert Dedman, uh, senior with Club Corp, the two got together and really identified this market as a perfect location for, for a private city club. And um, at the time, the building had not yet been built, uh, just just submitted for, for plan check. Uh, the club was, uh, was added to the, uh, to the building. Um, if you will, in the last minute, and a few minor changes were made in order to allow its existence here at the uh, at the ground level of Center Tower. Following that, of course, things were already in place in regards to the uh, the, uh, the performing arts center, performing arts center, yeah. and the concert hall. Concert hall is what I was trying to think of, which was then added on Correct. later on, yeah. and uh, and really this entire area. Um, Credit goes to uh, to Henry with his vision of making it to be a retail business art center, culture, uh, cultural cultural center, center of Orange County, yeah. and uh, and I think we can all agree that he he he, he managed to get that done. Uh, Absolutely. So so how long has the club component been in operation? The, the club opened in 1985, okay. in October of 1985. So we are. Uh, 33 years uh, wow. in operation, and of course, um, you know we've we've had to change. Um, I've, I've been here at the club for the uh, for over eight years, and uh, about six years ago is when we did our uh, club reinvention. Uh, reinvention is a terminology that we use at Club Corp for um, updating our clubs, not only in terms of physical aspects, but also uh, programming and what we provide for our members. And we did that in 2012. Uh, the project was completed and at the end of November of 2012. We had our grand reopening in January of 2013. And at that time, I feel, I feel that we were able to bring the club up to, up to date um, and to what our uh, members needed in terms of utilizing the facility. Um, so in, in many ways, we went from the original intent of the club in 1985 was a was a dining club, mm -hmm. whereas now, since 2013, the club is really positioned well as a lifestyle club. And um, as I said, our members utilize it for, for various reasons. We have, uh, we wanted to increase the number of uh, opportunities for members to visit mm -hmm. the club. So his, historical dining club were visited for special occasions, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe once a week, maybe once a month. Uh, whereas members now utilize the club 
several times a week, in some cases even several times a day. Yeah, uh, and that's exactly was our intention. And, and we talked about this a little bit as, as that you have you have an interesting and unique perspective because you've been here in this facility. It's not the only facility, and we'll get to that that you've been involved in in Orange County, Correct. right? But but you've been at this facility for eight years, and you have seen change in membership behavior, things around working habits, things of that nature. That where the club has had the opportunity to actually uh, step in and provide more, right? And in doing so, attract maybe a, a new uh, a group of, of new member, generation, a new of generation members. Of members. I think that would be true. I think historically, all clubs have been more uh, affirmational, mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you would arrive at some point in your life, in mm -hmm. your professional career, and then you would reward This is your, the reward of having arrived. Yeah, of you would arrive. reward yourself with a membership at a club, uh, in some cases very much in line with preparation for retirement, mm -hmm. uh, so you had to achieve a certain age, a certain position, um, before you felt uh, Traditionally, some, country clubs did ways, a lot of that. Correct. Yeah. Before you felt like you really deserved the membership, mm -hmm. if you will. Uh, whereas, I think now it's a lot more aspirational, mm -hmm. where people um, want to want to join clubs in order to enjoy them now, yeah. as opposed to later. And then also, in order to be able to socialize and network with, with club members, um, and be able to learn from those life lessons. So mentoring is a is a big part of our within our membership, from our young executive membership to our to our long term. And let's talk about that because I noticed with your programming, you have a very extensive program. Yes. And and some of it is literally what you were just saying: networking opportunities, right. breakfast. I think I even saw things on there that were you know that were gender specific, maybe like. For, for, for opportunity for women That's in right. business to get together and then and then you obviously you have the, the sort of the co-ed version of, of things as well let's talk a little bit more about that you so you mentioned mentorship yeah so give people a little bit of idea that what what comes with that membership to the center club well as I as I mentioned our vision is to be the preferred gathering place and so our programming programming is targeted to provide those opportunities for uh, for gathering uh, it could be, and one of those is men, is mentorship when, when we have uh, young executives that are just starting out in business or maybe just moving to the next level it's really uh, they're really interested in being able to talk to to those members that have traveled that road and can tell them a little bit about the uh, what, what to watch out for and maybe some life lessons of what they would have done differently mm -hmm. had they had the opportunity to do it again um, and you know, we, we all want to we all want to learn, but it's easiest to learn right when you have the need for that for that lesson. Um, so or you you have the awareness that you need correct. something or you're missing. That's correct. That's something correct. an assistance a help. So right mentorship. right where you want to be able to put it in use is always the is, is the most useful, mm -hmm. and and that's where members have an opportunity to connect with um, with longtime members that have achieved so much in their personal and professional career and again this is not all limited to work right. uh, so much of it is also personal uh, development and being able to, uh, to, to to get those lessons so for example one of our um, very popular programs is the power player breakfast mm -hmm. where where members share their experience if you will with uh, with the audience uh, we also have an empower hour that's put on by our Women's Impact mm -hmm. Council sure. that does a similar um, uh, setting in terms of providing information for the uh, for the up and coming and, and sharing. And of course, all events are a networking opportunity. Uh, connections is everything in today's world, and and being able to connect with the right people at the right time um, is truly priceless. The club really offers that opportunity with all of our programs. You know, Jane, it's really interesting because I think, given the fact that the club is 33 years old, as you said, it, given the way what we refer to these days as, you know, network opportunities, having a space that's co-work, for example, right, or where, where you have uh, boardrooms or meeting rooms that you could basically have enclosed private meetings. You have open spaces where you have you know joint working and interaction and cross cross uh, you know sharing, if you will, right? Yes. yes. Um, and and certain hubs become more appealing for people in certain industries that are that are complementary to one another and so forth. You guys have actually provide you have an exactly that same, you have that formula. That's correct. And you have it in a somewhat of an exclusive and you could argue you know. Plugging the show, but a luxury <laughs> level of this kind of you know kind of environment is, and it's very central. Yes. It's very convenient. 
it, it, you know, it, it, it is not cost prohibitive to be part of. In fact, you provide a lot of services and a lot of options within your facility. We're sitting in a wonderful room right here, and you can see the area behind us, and there are private rooms. There, there are socializing zones, which provide people to their comfort level a way to engage with one another. That's exactly the case. And, uh, and, and, and you said it perfectly. All of the spaces that you just kind of ran through are were all part of our reinvention. So mm -hmm. they were all thought, thought out uh, locations within the uh, within the facility mm -hmm. in order to create those opportunities because people um, operate differently it used to be you know public or private mm -hmm. but now uh, people like to be where people are mm -hmm. people want to want to conduct business in a uh, in a in a setting that provides the right level of energy mm -hmm. the right level of activity and then when there's a private need of course there's still that that a, a component in terms of having a, a private room to do things in a confidential manner. Uh, I often uh, talk about the club to where our encore area is more of an informal dining mm -hmm. uh, bar area and that's where people meet and, and talk about deals mm -hmm. uh, whereas our founders room is a little bit more um, elevated dining um, and a little bit a um, little bit nicer mm -hmm. and I say after the after the deals were discussed mm -hmm. uh, the final meeting where you close the deal occurs in the more uh, elevated setting of founders room well, let, let's talk a little bit more about that in terms of the hospitality because you really are other than the fact that you don't have rooms for basically for guests staying overnight, mm -hmm. and maybe you do, and I don't know about it. No, you <laughs> get a lot but, of requests. You get a lot of requests, <laughs> but, but it is a tall building. So, That's right. You know, I don't know what, what happens on the upper levels, right? I, I have not achieved. Asp I aspire to find out. Right. What okay, but but you do actually have what you would term a gathering space, a watering hole, is the, what you're calling your encore lounge. It's not necessarily just a bar. There's right. actually dining component and so forth, but it's Absolutely. not a sit down dining restaurant environment per se, yeah. but you also have that offering in your own styling That's right. here. And so it's very much components of what we would refer to traditionally as elements of hospitality. That's correct. And, and, it, okay, and I want to take this opportunity to show where your, leg, your heritage coming at this from prior <laughs> to being at the Center Club, yes. which is a part of the club core. That's correct. So you have sister properties. I mean, it's important to actually mention that with your membership, actually, you have sister properties Absolutely. That, that are part of the network. Yes. Right? Um, and we'll talk about where they are because I had an opportunity to actually enjoy one of them just recently, oh, just a little bit up the street. <laughs> but uh, let's talk about you. Okay. Okay. Before Center Club, okay. where was Shaheen? Well, I've, I've How been, did you get here? Well, I've been in hospitality for, uh, for several decades. Um, in, Restaurants, hotels, um, and of course, uh, clubs, country clubs, yep. and then of course now, Center Club Orange County as my first city club. But hospitality really, for me, started as being a kid. The house, yeah. Um, my parents. Um, that was just down the street in Tustin, right? <laughs> Irvine. Ir Irvine. <laughs> they live in they live in Irvine now. My 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 father is now ninety four. My mom is eighty five. Um, fortunate to have them both still with us and they're, they're really the ones my original professors in hospitality mm -hmm. um, so at our home didn't matter when I was a kid or whether whether it, today if you go if you go to my at my parents home within a matter of a few minutes there'll be offerings at mm -hmm. the table uh, they are very hospitable uh, very friendly and that's the same that that was the way I was brought up that was yep. the way I was brought up in order to provide that yeah. Uh, at the house, so uh, whether it be help, helping them or just serving. Uh, well, and, I, and, and I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna just for a moment <laughs> brag. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna brag because you actually have, you could argue, a DNA culturally. I think so. Okay. In being hospitable. I'll buy that. Okay. Uh, if and, and I can relate to that, right? Okay. <laughs> be, because because it's not it, it, there. There's such a thing as a learned. That's right. Skill, and there's such a thing as a natural propensity. Inherited. Okay. Inherited. Yeah. Okay. And I think if you are, it's not, neither one is wrong or right, but I That's think right. if you have that DNA component, okay, um, 
and we talk about this DNA component in others another show that I co-host with a co-host uh, my co-host Craig Sullivan he's very big about DNA and hospitality yeah. DNA you have a DNA for hospitality that's correct prior to you ever being employed anywhere probably that's correct I, w I would say that's very true and the terminology that that I use within the industry is a servant's heart servant's heart um, so absolutely one of my one of uh, the things that I do all the time is I meet every employee before before we um, hire somebody on, onto the team. Mm -hmm. And I have a, I like to have a conversation, just kind of an open conversation, because if uh, the if individual is going to be in front of our members and guests, uh, they need to also have that servant's heart. And it's, um, and you can always tell when you, when you encounter one of these individuals, yeah. and certainly all of our staff here at Center Club Orange County. And we get that feedback on a regular basis that um, our, our consumer seems almost surprised mm -hmm. that the staff wants to genuinely serve and help um, everyone uh, through at every at every encounter and every experience. And that's exactly what we uh, we look for um, in individuals with a servant's heart. And and I would so I would agree with you. I I am a product of that of that DNA theory mm -hmm. that you just mentioned, and I think that that's something that. It's easiest when it is inherited, mm -hmm. um, and then of course reinforced as and it's also um, learned behavior depending on the environment that you're in. And, and well, I, I've yeah. always I've always enjoyed the ability to be able to to serve people. Mm -hmm. And quite honestly, it's a, it's an uplifting experience. Mm -hmm. um, people come into your establishment, we find out what their needs are, and we fulfill them. Well, I mean, can't think of a better experience. Well, and than you that. you've been asked, and I think your <laughs> answer is. The answer is yes. That's correct. Right. The uh, I, I I actually uh, not only learned that from my parents, but also my my first manager at, at Club Corp when I joined uh, nine years ago originally at, at Code of the Casa Golf and Racquet Club, um, and his name is Eric Boberg. Eric was my general manager at the time, mm -hmm. and uh, and is now the senior vice president with Club Corp. Mm -hmm. So, um, and and that that saying. Uh, was was used on a daily basis, and I brought it to Center Club Orange County exactly the same way, which is yes is the answer. What's the question? And um, and the more we um, the more we encourage our staff to utilize that mm -hmm. that philosophy, the more we can provide for our, for our members. And quite honestly, there is very little, if any, room for the alternative in hospitality. You know, the word no, this doesn't really belong in hospitality. And that's, I think a lot, of, a lot of, sometimes, sometimes people don't understand that there is such a, such a natural propensity and personality that does that's well right. in hospitality. That's right. With that being said, we're going to take a break, okay. and we're going to basically come back, and we're going to learn more about Mr. Shaheen Vasu and Center Club and Club Corps, and what does he <laughs> value as luxury? So we'll be right back after this. Style is a way to say who you are without having to speak. Bespoke Designs handmade custom men's clothing and accessories. We provide the experience of dressing well that's custom tailored to highlight each person's personal brand. We want to partner with you to create a wardrobe that's reflective of who you are and how you live your life. We believe that fashion is not about what you wear, but how you wear it, and more importantly, why you wear it. The men of Bespoke are often described as confident, sophisticated, and dynamic. But that's probably because we don't just sell clothes, we sell confidence. Schedule your consultation today at bespokestyle.com. Welcome back, everybody. We are here at Center Club Orange County in Costa Mesa with the general manager, my good buddy, Shaheen Basu. And uh, Shaheen, why don't you give people that have been pay, uh, with us or that are just joining us how they can find out more about Center Club Orange County? Uh, as, as uh, Brad has mentioned, we're here in Costa Mesa uh, for membership information or, adi or additional uh, uh, information about the, uh, about the club. 
please feel free to visit our website, uh, center-club.com, uh, or you can call us at 714-662-3414, and we'll be happy to uh, provide uh, whatever information you need. So if, if you're just joining us, one of the things that we were talking about before the break was the fact that the Center Club Orange County went through a repositioning um, reinvention. reinvention. Um, it was an R word somewhere in there, right? Yeah. It was re a, a reinvention a few years ago to try to maintain its uh, its position in being relevant in the community, being a steward of the community, being a partner in the community. And Shaheen, you said you've been here yourself for eight years, and you've, there's been a lot of changes. Everything is is, is in flux usually, and you're very. I mean, th I think it probably more so the, the fact that you are an urban club. Yes, it's not like you're on a lake or on a golf course, you're central. That's you're right. in the heart of activity, uh, and that has changed. Anybody who's familiar with Costa Mesa or Reno or Orange County, the whole that way that things have happened and things happen today is not the same as it was eight years ago. That's so you guys have, have consciously, strategically reinvented to basically stay relevant. Not only have we reinvented to stay relevant, we continue to do that. And literally, innovate, actually. Literally on a daily basis. Yeah, you innovate, absolutely. Uh, because yeah, people do things differently, uh, and not only do they do, do they behave differently, but they change those behaviors um, regularly. So the only thing that's constant in today's business world is change itself. Change is the only and, constant, absolutely. And we have to, and we have to constantly adjust with that. Uh, it's to me that's one of the that's one of the things that I share with my staff mm -hmm. that um, membership of the club has no obligations by members. So we literally prove, prove ourselves to be of value and of use to our members on a daily basis. Absolutely. And we need to do that over and over again. I, I, we've seen a lot of change in the membership. Yeah. Uh, we have we have identified new markets that are not commonly associated with private clubs, uh, such as the young executive market and, a, and what we call the dynamic women. It's the women executive yeah. market. Uh, women and, and young executives are the two fastest growing segments within our membership. And, uh, and on a daily basis visible within the club in terms of uh, the, the heavy usage that we have from those factions of membership. You know, you, you brought up two terms uh, earlier, uh, and you said you made me mention to affirmational mm -hmm. and aspirational. That's right. Right? It's actually interesting how often I see those nuances that are very, very nuanced, missed, and yet, yet, you could argue that appealing to an aspirational client, an aspirational guest, okay, is a way to ensure repeat business because what comes out of aspiration in many cases, if you have the support provided in that environment or supportive environment, is affirmation. It's the affirmation. That's correct. Right. I mean, it, it really is, you know, so many businesses concentrate on the young executive market in order to position themselves well for the ultimate executive market and so what you're saying is absolutely true uh, you are when you go to the and you serve the aspirational market you are in fact uh, simply preparing and it could be argued that homegrown version of the affirmation market they may or may not be the exact same individuals right. it doesn't always have to be the same person right. that goes from A to B yeah. but it, it is the it is the the markets that are going from one market to the other and it's the um, it's the necessity to be able to serve all. Uh, whether you are, and this is a two-way, we talked about mentorship earlier, but right. I think mentorship goes both, both directions. Right. If you have a 50-, 60-year-old executive mm -hmm. whose product needs to be at least partially, if not fully, targeted to young executives, they need to be in touch with them. They have an opportunity to right. engage. Yeah. And the same way, if you have someone that's starting out in business and trying to to, to make it big, they can learn from the lessons of someone that's already made, uh, made it big. So it goes both both ways in terms of getting them involved. And perfect example that I like to always share with everyone: we do an event with our uh, with our young executive group. We do a social event every month, mm -hmm. and what what you'll see every time is a good mix of very young millennial executives as well as older. Uh, more experienced professionals, yeah. as well as those that are retired and just simply enjoy the energy. 
of the you, event. You, you, know, you know, we all, you also mentioned about a servant's heart, and we talked about sort of the DNA and hospitality. Mm -hmm. It's it's interesting listening to you uh, share this last bit because what it's making me realize is that you said that you evaluate people that come in and that you're thinking about employing or basically mm -hmm. being part of your ambassadors to the membership That's right. and that you look for that servant's heart. I think what's interesting to me is it sounds to me like you're also attracting by virtue of the nature of environment that you are building and you sustain membership that has a servant's heart. It, it, uh, I think that there's probably some truth to that as well. Um, you know, it's it, as I said, connections and networking is really is power in today's world. Well, and you're in, in, I think you're also instilling because I, I I'm involved in a lot of nonprofits and volunteering and stuff like that, and I know and I tell people there's a selfishness about me volunteering. <laughs> it gives me a reward that I don't want anybody to know about necessarily, right. but I share with everybody anyway, right? It, I think what also being exposed to people, whether it is on the operational side, in the environment that, that, that is here at the Center Club Orange County, or through the membership yes. and the mentorship programs, you're instilling in those aspirational members. That's correct. A servant's heart. That's correct. Or, or, or a give back, a, a, a pay it forward component, which is unbelievable. Well, in fact, they, you know, whatever business they're in, they're ultimately dealing with people. So the better you, the better you prepare yourself and the better you position yourself right. to be able to take care of people. Um, you know, I think I think there's a little bit of hospitality in every right. industry. Right. Because you know, because it doesn't happen by itself and by robots. There's there's people involved in almost every industry. Well, people try to do it automated and by robot, they but, do. but but there is something to be said. Personal about, connections about are, that always, personal are connection. always the best. There's still the handshake. There's That's still right. the meet That's face right. to face. In even today's and and when you talk about um, changing uh, the marketplace changing that's one of the things that has changed you could see you could see that some 10 15 years ago people started with technology started to work out of from home from remote locations and there wasn't as much interaction but what came out of that is that even though you can get everything done in a in a silo you may not want to get everything done in the silo. You, you want to still have interaction and understand what behavior is like, so what preferences true. are like, so that you don't uh, lose that human touch. And because of that, I think uh, a lot of clubs, such as ourselves, have benefited from that because people look at the city club as a location to be able to connect and get that experience. We have members that come and, come and do their work uh, in the club on a regular basis, yep. either to get away from the office or in lieu of having an office. And what's amazing to me is that they don't always go find the most secluded place in the yeah. club to be able to do that. They want to do it where, where, they're still, where they're still connected and interacting with members. Um, I often go to, go to people to, to find out if the noise is bothering them or do you need a more, you know, a quieter corner. Yeah. And, and more often than not, um, and the feedback I get is no, I I like it here. I enjoy I enjoy seeing where the activity is, and still being able to listen to to other conversations and other interactions within the room. So, just simply more proof that you, the people need that you know interaction. What? You're 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 very <laughs> right because I've walked through and your rooms that are you know behind closed door where you could you know, have sort of that quiet privacy. Right. Those are the rooms that I see least least used during the course <laughs> of a day. And the the, the the Encore Lounge is the one that I see very much used. That's now, maybe right. people may be on their, uh, you know, on their, their buds headsets, or whatever, yeah. headsets. They may be out stepping outside where we are here. This is part of the, the Center Club Orange County. Right. Uh, you know, that that uh, they are outside taking that moment. They're, they're, they're having a coffee, stepping away from their office, which is the table inside. That's correct. For a moment, right? <laughs> Just, I moved. I, I walked away from my desk. <laughs> I'm now outside, right? And, and, and actually, you're very right because I think I can be in my zone, but I want to have interaction of people or a That's sense right. of being part of a bigger thing. And that you, as we move away to more of a remote working and less people in an, in an office environment, Yes. Right, that is that is all under one company name or what have you. We seek that. I think human beings are social animals. Absolutely. Well, I mentioned that it's work and play. So here's the best part of all of this: when you know you can you can come to the club for a for a work day, yeah, or you can come to the club for a social day, yeah, or you can come to the club for a play day. Uh -huh. 
or you can just go from one purpose to the next purpose. And what I say, one of the best benefits I have at the club is you can you can do work and go to play and just like that. So you just set yourself <laughs> up for this one. Okay. You just set up your set yourself for this one. What do you come to the work to the club for? Is it work or is it play? Well, you or know, is it both? I, I joke that you know find something you enjoy and you never have to work another day in your Amen, life. Amen, brother. And I and I truly do enjoy what I do. That being said, um, on a serious note, you know work is still work. We got to get things done. Yeah. We have to achieve our results, and you want to feel accomplished by the time your your work day is over. Uh, so so I, I I come to the club to work because this is the place. This is my job. Mm -hmm. um, but that being said, um, you know I still I still enjoy. Uh, some of the components of the club uh, because as I interact I'm utilizing the club in exactly the same way that our, that our members are utilizing the club. I interact with our members, I interact with their guests I get to know people and I make connections throughout the, throughout the community so as a, even though I'm the manager of the club, I still benefit from the club exactly from the same offer you know, you, of our you, members. You said, you said that you notice when you interact with people, you bring them in, that you see immediately or very quickly that a person is of a serpent's heart of a certain DNA, yes. right? But well, you know, what's interesting is I also look at you, and I've also been around hospitality for a while, almost 20 years, right? Mm -hmm. In one form or the other, servicing that industry. And I will tell you, when I look at you, I understand the hard work and, and the, the labor of love that, and passion that goes into what you do, and it shows in everything that's around you, everything I touch as a member here. But I also see that your reward of this is not just like some other people I've seen hospital where they're checking at nine at five o'clock, <laughs> nine o'clock, they walk out walk out at five, it's a, a clock in, clock out. Right. You are rewarded in more ways by being part of this, seeing Absolutely. somebody basically succeed. And, and and it's really wonderful because because that makes me want to be more engaged and as a member. Okay, you're you're at my asper, I'm a, I aspire to be Shaheen <laughs> at what I do, right? Um, and and okay, so two things I want to make sure we cover. One, okay. one is let's talk about things like the the quality of food here is phenomenal. I mean, Thank this you. again just doesn't happen happenstance. Right. Okay, the quality of the events, the 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 innovation that goes into the programming, right? So so let's talk about the food specifically. Okay. Okay. What goes into what decides on your menu? What you, you guys have seasonal stuff. You're constantly, you know, staying Absolutely. with your activities are even seasonal. We have um, we typically have two major menus in play at all times. Um, one for our uh, upscale dining and one for our casual dining. And our casual dining menu, we uh, we do a thing called refresh uh, every couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. So we may not write an entirely new menu, but every couple of weeks we introduce new items. We have members that are at the club on a daily basis, right. certainly on a weekly basis, and they really demand that variety. You don't want to come back and look at the same menu. Yeah. Um, our food and beverage director very often uses the saying that when he sees people saying, I don't need a menu, I know already what's on it, it's, that's, you, you it's, need it's time. time to start changing things, right? So uh, it, in, in reality, we we make changes before we ever hear those kind of a comments, mm -hmm. and we seldom hear those kind of a comments. And when someone does say, I'm familiar with the menu, we remind them that we just added some new items and you might want to check it out. So it's uh, so, so maintaining that variety is a, is a big part of the, the, the equation. And of course, really listening to members by, by having that kind of a uh, variety of change, mm -hmm. then we can gauge what things meet with member satisfaction, member demand, and what things don't. Well, I think people don't understand that, especially in today's society, and with what you mentioned is a range of ages in terms of your membership, there is a variety of demands. Vast health, variety. Yeah, right. <laughs> Not only just health and, and, and dietary, but right. th there's limitations, there's things like that. So to hit that sweet spot and then to take on changing it every two weeks is not a small uh, yeah. endeavor. We have, we have uh, and by we I refer to my, my staff, has become a lot more savvy in all, in all of those categories. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So there was a time where you wanted to have something heavy and something light on a menu. Well, that time is long gone. In addition to, to having it heavy or light, right. now you need different varieties. Is there enough seafood represented? Is there enough 
poultry represented? Is there enough beef? Mm -hmm. Is there a vegetarian option? Is there is there enough vegetarian options to actually um, uh, be be, uh, be offered as a selection? Well, and, and not and not just an afterthought, or I, I have this on the menu just to make sure. So I have can you just take this out yeah, of it to make right. it that? No, so right. it's actually designed right. as a vegetarian dish, and then in addition to those, then it's a, then it's the other requirements that come with the with the diets today. Uh, is there is it dairy free? Is it gluten free? Uh, and all of those necessities have to be incorporated so that there's a good representation on the menu and. Our goal is we have over a thousand memberships, so we have several thousand members that can come and visit us. Our goal is to make sure that every member can find the right item on the menu at every visit. So being able to maintain that, we, we get a lot of feedback from our members um, and, and we try a lot of different things. So where we take credit for is just be willing to try. And if it doesn't, if it doesn't meet the, the, the needs of the membership, right. then we quickly change it to something else. Well, and Jade, let's talk about that also what comes with being part of the, the club core network. Okay? Absolutely. Is, and let's talk about that too because it's not th that, that level of service that you exemplify in your location here right. in Center Club Orange County. There are sister properties That's correct. that also kind of can you, that, that those members that you are, that this is a home base like myself, right. we are then basically going elsewhere and tell people a little well, bit more a, about that network. There's a lot of there's a lot of benefits uh, at being a member at, at Center Club Orange County because you have access to our, to our extensive network of clubs throughout the country, uh, whether it be uh, in, as, as nearby as, as L.A., out on, the, out on the desert, down in San Diego, or like I said, just throughout the country. And our, our members have the, uh, the benefit of ha access to all of those locations very often with complimentary benefits at each location. So we encourage our members to uh, to utilize the club. You mentioned you had recently um, experienced City Club Los Angeles. I did. 50 first, 50 first floor. That's right. Looking down right. on the Staples Center, <laughs> I felt like a bird perched in a nest. And each each club, as we talked about it uh, before, each club really tries to embody the community that they're right. in and uh, and make that to be a part of their, uh, their, their being. A lot of our reinvention has a lot to do with the musical theme because we're near the concert hall. Right. But each club um, really in, in embodies their community wherever they are. Well, and, and I, I, I'm not, I wanted to mention that to make sure that every, everybody basically realizes this is the interesting thing about this for me is when you are actually a demanding consumer, a demanding guest, okay, there's a certain level of sophistication that you look for, a certain depth. It's not just the sizzle, it's actually the substance of the steak, okay? Right. And when you find a location like this, and Center Club, uh, or City Club Los Angeles, thank you very much for hosting, it's wonderful. The, the GM walked over and said hello, everything, but you know what? I still have a, a, a fondness for this location more, so we have a little rivalry going. I'll check out San Diego, I'll get back to you guys about that too, right? But, but there is a level of sophistication that you kind of want to be part of what you receive. And that is a measure of luxury for me, right? This is a location. This is the kind of operation that you want to definitely check out. And let's give people that website again, Shady. Uh, Center-club.com. And, and, and our phone number is 714-662-3414. Okay. And before we, before we call this episode of Selling the Lux Life done and over, uh, I want to ask you a question. Okay. What is luxury for you? Like when you when and I've seen you, you've seen you <laughs> scammer off to the side, you know, at, at five o'clock and go, what what is luxury for she when you're not here at Center Club, aren't you? Luxury to me is really service. It's being able to have things provided for you. So it's really no different than what what we do for our members throughout the day. When when I when I leave the workplace, um, for me to be able to enjoy myself, I go to places where I can have things done for me and turn the tables the other way, if you will. And, and any time that the appropriate level of service is provided, I believe, I truly believe, that makes you feel like king, and it relaxes you, and that relaxation, in my opinion, is priceless. So where do you go when you're not here for that? Almost any hole in the wall. Uh, at the same time, I try to take opportunities to go check out 
new and upcoming places yeah. because they will inspire you one way or the other in terms of how to to how do to or not in, to do. How to, well, stay in touch with your market, right. like I was saying before. Yeah. So I'll, I'll check out uh, restaurants as they as they first come online, and then check them out again within 30 days to see to see how they have developed. Um, but then at the same time, I just enjoy going to really casual places and relaxing um, because that's the flip side of coming in on a daily basis, you know, uh, in a little bit more formal setting and, and taking care of people on, uh, throughout the day. Well, so thank you for thank you for having us. Thank you for thank hosting you. us. Thank okay. you, Rex. Everybody, please check out uh, the Center Club Orange County. Come on by. Shaheen is very approachable and accessible. <laughs> He'll say hello to you. Absolutely. Uh, and it really is a unique oasis in the middle of Costa Mesa, in the middle of Orange County, um, in the shadows of the Performing Arts Center. And I really encourage you to check it out. Check out uh, Club Corps, their offerings. And uh, join us next time on Selling the Lux Life, produced and brought to you by Golden State Media. And I thank you. I thank you. Thank you. Have a great week, everybody. See you again soon. Bye. <laughs> Thank you for joining us this week on Selling the Lux Life. We hope you enjoyed the show and look forward to hearing your thoughts and feedback via email on our social media platforms. Be sure to tune in next time as we continue discussing life's luxuries that inspire us while showcasing members of the Orange County community that share our same passion for sophisticated living.